Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to HR Kata Presents Happiness at Work, powered by happiness.me. For this episode, we have Pankaj Lochan as our guest. Pankaj, who is currently the executive director and group CHRO at Jindal Steel and Power, has spent years in the manufacturing sector. In, this, in the last 25 years, he has worked for major brands, Tata Steel, JSW Steel, Dr. Reddy's, and Ambuja Siemens. He's a people's person and believes in action more than words. Today, he will share what happiness is at the shop floor and how the quotients of happiness changed among workers at the shop floor over the years. Welcome to the show, Pankaj. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so, <laughs> shall I start? I mean, uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I, you know, I will yeah. okay, so, I'll, I'll start. Uh, generally, you know, you, you have spent a large number of years in manufacturing, you know. How do you think the quotients of happiness changed? You must have seen generations at the soft floor, you know. How has the quotients of happiness changed specifically for the grassroots level employees at the shop floor or the workers at the shop floor? So, so you know, the two parts to it. The first is that um, I consider uh, happiness at work to be almost synonymous with the engagement levels, you know, okay. the kind of engagement levels you create. Um, engagement level, of course, in my opinion, has four distinct parts, which is um, how a two way communication structure uh, is, you know, kind of matures in the organization where you hear what the employee has to say at the same time, you um, also uh, the, as, as, as management, you also are able to equally communicate equally well. Um, what are the expectations, you know, in terms of, so that's the two way communication is the first piece. I'll talk about each of them once I've kind of taken okay. you through this. The second piece is um, very important, which is education and training, you know, because, you know, what is the meaning of engagement for me? If I'm an employee and my management is educating me to take up higher jobs or, you know, is kind of reskilling or upskilling me, I feel engaged. Okay. So just as the first one, I said that communication, which means that management tells me what they expect from me. And I tell them what I need in, you know, to do that well. And what are my other needs, you know, kind of social, psychological needs. And then I feel engaged. Similarly, if the management educates me well, I feel engaged because, you know, they're considering me important. Third is, even if you communicate well and educate well, and you don't, don't empower well, which is, you know, the, the, the quality of problem solving or the, uh, the way you empower people to take decisions or the DOPs as we call them, yeah. then this will not work. So if I have the management has reposed faith in me as an employee and I am empowered to take decisions, I consider this to be my company and me the owner of the company. And hence, I feel engaged. Right. The fourth Again, even if you communicate well, even if you educate well, if you empower well, and then good good things happen, the KPIs improve, but you yeah. don't reward well. So everything so becomes meaningless. So the fourth and the most quintessential element of engagement is that you reward well. And then this is a virtuous cycle, you know, communication, education, uh, empowerment, and reward and recognition. So this becomes a virtuous cycle. And then each each cycle, you know, successive cycle will become stronger than the earlier one. Because a rewarded employee, more than the monetary or the, you know, the fisc fiscal uh, benefit that you get, it's about that, okay, my work has been recognized. I will do more of it. I'm engaged. So again, going back to your basic question, to me, uh, happiness at work is almost synonymous with the engagement. Mm -hmm. The second part, so how do, there are two ways of you know getting to higher engagement levels. The first is through structure, and the second is through purpose. Or maybe the first one is purpose, and the second one is structure. What is engagement? Uh, higher engagement on purpose. So as a company, you really want to keep your employees happy. You're doing all those things that come your way. Whatever you learn from others, whatever you know about, and whatever comes your way, you know somebody tells you something. There's a consultant, there is academia, there is, there is papers, you know, floating around. There are, you know, uh, your, uh, you know, you might be benchmarking with your peers, cross industry, across industry. Uh, so, you know, all of those, and then you try and implement them. That's the purpose that, yes, I want to engage my employees well and keep them happy. 
to me the second one which is structure is more important how do you have a multi level communication structure that connects the entire organization that communicates the requirement of the business plan at the same time understands the grievances and you know welfare requirements and everything and you know dovetails the two together and puts them in unison so that's the communication a multi level so in jspl i don't know if you want to really hear the jspl context also here no no certainly yes no no i want yeah, to so, yeah so in jsp jindal steel and power what we have done is we have a three level communication structure where there are okay. a set of programs where the senior management connects to everyone then there are those fgds kind of uh, sessions where you know we have it every month and we have launched this signature program the 10 of them very recently and then there is a third level where there is employee hearing called samadhan and you know samvad where we reach out to people in a formal manner so every leader has to do a samvad every 15 days a samadhan is a basically grievance redressal system which is the other one which is again to be done every month so you know in my uh, monthly goals i would write down i would have one samvad session with this plant i would have one samvad session with the corporate or the or the this plant or that plant so you know this is how um, you know even you know the chairman and the md they track and they keep a very close watch of how the cxos are kind of and then the levels below so that's on communication similarly on education so education is again at three levels at the basic worker and supervisor level you work on skill so how okay. do you increase the skill index second level is managers where you improve on improve their competency make managerial competency so it's skill competency and then behavior which is leadership behavior for the kind of cxos and the incumbent cxos and the next thing the senior management roles yeah yeah so again we have a three tier very structured programs the first one the top one is known as ldps the leadership development program the middle ones are the you know what management development programs mdps so we are we are having the middle managers development program and a series of others and then we have the skill development programs or the sdps at the bottom so this is again a three layer structure similarly for empowerment of course the delegation of powers are there and the fourth one reward and recognition again we have apex plant and bu and department level okay so as you can see all of them follow a three tier structure so apex means the awards that will be given by the chairman and the cxos chairman md and cxos yeah. then there would be plant heads who would be giving away their annual month uh, quarterly and monthly rewards and then we have empowered the departmental heads to give um you know a host of awards some of them are called you know there's something very simple called shabashi so we hold a shabashi session every month i recently last week i was in patratu and barbil we held the shabashi sessions where we rewarded all those quality circle improvement projects the top of top top of the list and then they gave we gave them a a certificate of recognition and of course a a coupon so this happens annually for each plant no no this happens monthly monthly okay every month every department and every plant the chairman level rewards happen as an apex award and then okay. that happens once a year so that's how and those are daily top level projects big innovations uh, big breakthroughs and uh, cross functional projects uh, complex problem solving projects and things like that so again what i said is the purpose is very important but more important is the structure of how you do it so to me if you have a proper structure for covering these four aspects of engagement which is um, communication education empowerment and uh, rewards Reward. and recognition so if you cover all these four your employees will be basically happy because you have done it through both structure and purpose purpose is inclusive when you have structure but structure is not inclusive when you have only purpose purpose right so here is my take on you know how so you know what i have done is you know sometimes we talk talk about happiness as an art subject you know it's it's not actually it's not just it's the art it's a science art, subject you know you can scientifically write it down and say that okay 1 1.1 1.2 1.3 1. then 2 2.1 2.2 2.3 2. and when you write down your uh, happiness at work and convert it into kpis you know it moves much better so i believe that Uh, anything which is not measured cannot be managed properly and that's why you know i kind of took you through the whole cascade of how yeah. we you know measure happiness at work so what has been the outcome you know you you have been since when have you been uh, you know uh, so doing this in 2020 and uh, yeah. we have had two employee satisfaction survey since then uh, yeah. things are looking up of course all this uh, starts reflecting some of them have been very recent so i expect that the next employee satisfaction survey 
or our ESI score, as we call it, Employee Satisfaction Index, would look yeah. up much better. Okay. And 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 how has it changed the mood of the workers, or or how has it changed or converted into more productivity? Have you seen Absolutely. some Absolutely. business results in that? So so typically, typically yeah. there are three business results that you would see, and of course yeah. everything kind of culminates into a bit time profitably. I'm not looking at that just now, but yeah. first is that attrition has been going down. We're talking about the great resignation, but yeah. we at JSP, Jindal Steel and Power are not seeing that. Fortunately, I mean, we thank all our employees and their, you know, uh, immediate seniors. Yeah. We are not seeing uh, impact and touch wood. Uh, we are very happy about it. Uh, people talk about the great resignation and things like that. Our res our attrition rates are lower than last year. Okay. So that's the first thing. Second. Generally, what would be the... Sorry to interrupt you. No? Generally, I'm just asking. What would be the reason half, for your... Three and a half percent. Uh, three and a half percent is something. Yeah. Which is, so, so I think... Um, Engagement levels have gone up. Okay. You know, which company would you find the chairman and the MD engaging with the grassroots level employees? Our chairman visits, chairman and MD visit the plants every week. Okay. So it's That's not it. a kind of a high profile visit. You know, they come, they do problem solving, they meet up with people, they would go to the project site. And, you know, when you have a grassroots level employee interacting with them and interacting often and not as an annual affair, it gives you a very different level of engagement. Yeah. And then they come up with, you know, that we don't have this, we don't have that. And we immediately, you know, kind of act on them. And sometimes it comes as a, you know, a, a knee-jerk reaction also. And we're, we're quite okay with it. You know, when you want to move at this speed, you will have these kind of, uh, these kind of, you know, um, aberrations and reactions. But that's okay. That's a part of a healthy system. As long as at the end of the day, you feel that, yes, we are moving in the positive direction, it's fine. Secondly, coming back to the KPIs, attrition is one. Second yeah. is a qualitative measure, which I personally feel very good about is that when your Samadhan sessions or the grievance redressal sessions, the, the, the type of the type of issues change yeah. from grievances to suggestions, you have a right. So I feel, you know, initial Samadhan sessions used to be like, everybody's talking about what is not right, you know. I don't have this, there is a problem, I don't have this house or this or that. Yeah. Those are still there, some of them. And we are we are quite okay with it because we address each of them, both in generic and in specific measure. So the problems were much more personal rather than as the problems were team led. No, no, they were they were complaints, yeah. grievances. Grievances. So the, it used to be like 90% grievances. Now what we see is it is some amount of grievances still come because it's a large company. But they have kind of also started using those forums to express themselves ki, sir, we should do this. We should do this. I mean, ideas they come, up, they come up bubbling with ideas. So this is a qualitative measure which I personally feel very good about is that, you know, the, the quality of the nature of complaints have changed. They say, why don't we go into this product? Why don't we do this? Why are we not selling in that area? I didn't find any ad of Panther in, in, in that market. My home... My, one of them told me, my hometown is in so-and-so district. I yeah. don't see any Panther ads there. I was so happy to hear that, you know. And I, we immediately told the guy, why don't you market it well there? Yeah. So, you know, employees are now forthcoming and they see that, okay, we are building a great and resilient brand and that we need to do more. The sense of ownership yes. is coming. Yes, absolutely. Extreme ownership. Our chairman says that extreme ownership is the fountainhead of all of this. Third measure is manpower productivity. So we aren't hiring so much, you know, we are, we are, we are filling our expansion plans with the existing set of people. And we have a very strong cadre base now. We, we have GETs, diploma engineers, and, and, you know, we're trying to fill most of our vacancies that come about or the new, new positions that come about in, in wake of our expansion projects through these people. And that is also making a major shift because our average age is coming down drastically, you know, okay. You'll find more young 20, 25 kind of faces around you. Even if you go to a project, you'll find a GT of last year working in the projects. And just imagine the kind of exposure he's getting or she's getting, right? I think I think these are the three things that I look at. One is the Can how the mix changing, how the mood changing. The other is, you yeah. know, the nature of complaints, you know, it changes from grievances to uh, suggestions. And of course, the yeah. manpower productivity, of course, is going up. 
uh, not just because our production rates are going up, but, but also because our people are kind of, I know. So I think that's how I look at it. Well, tell me something, you know, generally, you know, in manufacturing, most companies, you know, have faced, uh, you know, problems like aggressiveness of the workers, you know, because they, they, they you know, there are a lot of pressure or, or, you know, not meeting their demands or not listening to them. Like what, what you have, you know, that Sangbad and some other, you know, with, with the uh, workers, has it, uh, you know, has it brought down the, the, the aggressiveness of employees? Yeah, to the, to the, from the level that it was at, yes, of course. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, there was something right about it earlier also, yeah. because generally you won't find any kind of aggression with the people here. Primarily because um, there were growth opportunities, the company was growing, and uh, also because, you know, if you look at our infrastructure, the kind of infrastructure that we provide, I don't know if you've seen our townships in the plants, they're phenomenal. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, sometimes we say that, you know, we've built a plant in the garden. Okay. So, so the very green, uh, spacious built layout, a um, lot of care, even during COVID, we would be making sure that our horticulture is, you know, right. And, you know, people have kind of positivity around them. So our grievances were not of that nature. Aggression, of course, wasn't there. Yeah. And possibly because we've never had those wage related issues primarily. We've always made sure that, you know, we are a little above what smaller industries around us do when, you know, kind of at par with our peers. So I think aggression wasn't there. But yes, Samadhan and Sampark have obviously brought down whatever it was to a to a lower level now. Right. Okay. So and 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 generally, you know, that that was basically from a uh, worker's point of view. But have you seen any kind of change that has happened at the corporate level of employees? There, uh, you know, and when you said that, you know, you have much more younger workforce right now, younger lot coming in, the aspirations there, uh, you know, of idea. There's, some, yeah. there's of something that we've started tracking now, or maybe I can answer this question a few months later. Is we've started this whole program called Mera Sujhav, in which, uh, uh, you know, we're looking at a number, target number of number of suggestions per employee per year that is implemented. So I don't have the data just now, but you know, uh, directionally, what I can tell you is that yeah. people come up bubbling with ideas and that's an indication of um, a sphere of positivity around, uh, you know, so that they see that the ecosystem is you know, blooming and we are into growth projects and, you know, we are kind of giving good increments. Um, we have given very good increments. The last two increment cycles have been good. And so I think there is a sphere of positivity around the people and 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 of course, as I said, I'm repeating for the third time, maybe yeah. attrition has come down. While everybody seems to be grappling with the great resignation, I'm yet yeah. to see, I'm yet to see the likes of it in Jindal Steel and Power. Tell me something, you know, how is the societal uh, changes or, you know, the aspirational changes that we have seen in the society? How, how does it impact the mood of uh, the workers now at the shop floor, you know, do you see a change in aspirations? Do you see, a, you know, that also impacts the happiness of workers? Uh, the other thing is that, you know, maybe I forgot to say that, you know, in our townships, yeah. we have a lot of forums, you know, when you are living in remote areas in, in well-built townships and you yeah. provide good forums of engagement at societal level, you know, you have various competitions, things, you know, various not just of, for the workers, but for the family. Yeah, well. for the families, you have, you know, a lot of competitions happening, a lot of small, small things happening. Of course, you know, with the limitations that COVID poses, yeah. uh, we still used to have in you know, smaller groups and, you know, because it's a self-contained township and everybody's kind of vaccinated now. So we've been doing a lot of that. So, so that's one part of the happiness, which I forgot to mention back on the question yeah. on aspirations. I think somewhere, um, you know, there is a shift that is happening um, and this kind of you you might have written about or, you know, yeah. you would be writing in future, which is people are now not very keen on working in, in, in metros. Slowly, this shift is happening over the last three, four years. And I myself kind of 
said that no i would operate out of the uh, the plants and i would like to live in a township breathe more fresh air and uh, you know so somewhere i think i feel that the quality of life that you offer in a township you know it it kind of um cares for at least a large part of the aspiration that you have right the other comes from your you know um, the kind of scope that you offer at work for career progression so since we are a large organization and growing very fast you know about uh, jsp's um, kind of growth rate everybody is talking yeah. about it but more importantly what we see as a good point from an employee's perspective is that they see okay there are five new positions coming up so i might get into one and you know i might have a steeper growth um our targets internally and uh, our uh, 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 so you know we have been talking about it that you know we must have most of our cxos in the next 10 years in a let's say you know under 40s you know that's our target yeah. and that's what we are looking yeah. at so you know some of these graduate engineer trainees who would be uh, you know joining us or the management trainees joining us they would be you know so we we have so 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 the aspiration from a work standpoint is taken care uh, from that and uh, from that point of view and and the you know the social aspects we take care through our well built townships and we are also moving most of our corporate staff to to the townships very soon to the plant locations angul would be our kind of uh, center for because we are going to build a 25 million ton steel plant there and you know it would be not only india's largest but the world's largest we have an aspiration of building a 25 plus 25 million ton plus plant so the kind of or the behemoth of things that are going to happen or you know the so looking at all plus and minuses together of a large township we are preparing for the onslaught and we are going to build up a very huge infrastructure that is no less than a city you know that offers you all the luxuries of a city in a okay. green yeah. environment and a clean environment so that's how i said socially we are taking care of aspirations you know you can bring your parents they can have long walking tracks they can you know their woods and their parks and you know big playground for your children which you don't get in no metros you know neither in schools nor in metros and then you have on your work side you have a fast moving company that gives you opportunities every other day knocking on your door say that oh you want to go into this you role you get work for yeah so i think between the two we provide a very aspirational um you know oh, sorry not aspirational we take care of the aspirations you know is it easier to manage people when you know when you have everyone staying in a township yes of course because it's a very close knit community and they care for each other much more you know uh, uh, not just working together in the in the office but you know they're um, you know also next door neighbors the relationship is much better the social bonding is much better the productivities are much more you know your social security even for nuclear families in these townships are much more you know if you're staying in a metro and staying in a flat your next door neighbor may not be connected to you professionally and has no yeah. bearing on your on your social life may not be you know you may choose not to have any relationship here you can't and that you know is a big support system you know you are you may not be there you may be on an i'll give you an example you know i was one day on a on a you know od2 you know apps somewhere out and then something happened at home and then my neighbors immediately took care and then took to Uh, the family to hospital and took care of everything i just i was just told after everything was over you know uh, don't worry um, uh, you know the kid fell down and you know you you had a this thing we we are already managed yeah, don't, don't worry i mean the, you don't even inform you unless it is something very serious so there is a whole you know it's a social package you know we have been in india we have been brought up with that uh, mindset you know family is what your blood relations are and you know by marriage what you acquire by marriage or by blood relations Yeah. family is not just that family is also the people with whom you live for 15 years in the same company same township i mean it's it's a big very large family you just have to open your eyes to it and you know that's how i look at it when when we do the architecting of yeah. of our social you know network the township the way we build the way the way we build the forums the way we build the networks the way we you know kind of socially engage people we look at this very important and uh, thankfully our you know chairman is very much into it you know he, he personally you know attends those yoga camps in the morning or you know he goes cycling and then the people would be there with him and you know so it's a it's a very different ecosystem compared to a lot of 
other large manufacturing organizations that I have seen. Where people move in, you know, come in to work and then, you know, go back to their places and then again come to work. So it is so not I'll, just... I'll give you another example. Uh, chairman used to attend these GTs boot camps in the morning. Okay. Our graduate engineer trainees who join, uh, you yeah. know, they have these boot camps. Every day morning they would have, you know, we will have a yoga instructor and the trainer and taking them to a park and doing exercises. He would join them a lot of times. I would join them. All senior folks join them. So it makes a very socially engaging workplace, actually. Do you, you know, uh, how how do you, you know, how do you think uh, personal happiness impacts professional happiness? Uh, oh, yes. They're, they're almost synonymous, you know, because that if you are everything are two happy back or, home, yeah. if you have everything back home, everything is happy, I mean, you, you spend your energy into the work. I mean, yeah. For me, as an employee, it has been like that. Today, as a CHRO, I also look at it the same way. No different at all. So I am doing here what I enjoyed, you know, you know, feeling what I enjoyed yeah. feeling that, okay, the, this company takes five years back what I was enjoying, you know, that, okay, the company takes care of the family very well. The schools are good. Everything is fine. So, you know, I put all my you know efforts into the work. So that's how it is. You know, it's, it's quid pro quo. I mean, it's just equal and but, opposite. But as an organization, you know, probably we can take care or or we can, uh, you know, we can take care of, of the ha professional happiness, you know, that this is what the... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Are. I was about to talk about that. And uh, in fact, then we actually, you know, we went into something else. So um, we have very organized forums now, you know, um, um, we have kind of branded set of initiatives. I really can't be talking about all of them just now. But there are, you know, there's something called Eve to Express. There is something called Thank You Board, you know, where um, you have the Thank You Boards and people writing all stuff about somebody. And then you have Employee of the Month, Gems of JSP. You know, there are a lot of institutional forums that we have built over the years. And of course, some, some things that we have added recently. And these are, you know, means of creating, weaving that social fabric at work where you care for each other. You know, there is a camaraderie going up because, you know, you say that sometimes, you know, thanking people, appreciating people. And, um, you know, um, we have this, we have something called the 411, which is our, uh, you know, weekly goal. Our chairman okay. has had a point on the 411. You know what it is? It was no. appreciate five people every day. Okay. So, um, I mean, if the chairman can think about that and put it on his goal priorities, um, uh, that, you know, I am going to appreciate five people every day. So, you know, that's how it cascades down. Then I also wrote down, okay, appreciate five people every day. And, you know, it cascades down. You do it consciously. Sometimes social fabric is something that is knitted over years. And you know, that's how it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And you have to uh, first start believing in, in the basic so a happy workplace is equal to a more productive workplace right so you have to do you know you have to kind of do a whole host of things to make your workplace a happier workplace yeah so i talked about the the the, the, the social aspects of the townships the career progression at work but i think the most important thing you just prompted me which i had missed out which is you know the forums the institutional forums that you have um the only thing which I differ from many organizations is that there is too much of informality in recognitions. You know, you do everything on the spar or, you know, that is fine. But then you should have a structure. Like we have, you know, we say that employee of the week or, you know, gems of JSPL, the monthly thing. Or we have Eve to Express where, you know, you get a chance to express yourself with senior folks. And then we have uh, some other sessions where people kind of come up and talk about their problems or you know something like uh, a thank you board where people write say that i thank this person the person passes by and, he, and the person feels oh my god they're talking about me i didn't know so it, it's kind of as you say inverse paranoia you know the whole world yeah. is world is conspiring to do you good <laughs> but but you know sometimes when you award uh, say suppose you know employee of the week you know does, does it also, you know, create some kind of, you know, somebody who is left out, 
might be no. different. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Is, so we have, we have we have grappled with this with this topic yeah. uh, many times, and let me yeah. give you a very very clear understanding on this. My understanding. Yeah. When you do it as in non institutional work, which is you don't have a calculation methodology for deciding who is the best employee of the month, then you have lost it. You have demoralized 20 others. 20 others. But when you have a very overt, expressed, and a metric based system of saying that, okay, this guy brought down this shutdown duration from this to this. And so he's a star of the week. So people would know beforehand that, okay, this guy would, would be on the spot. They would keep no guessing. Is bar, yeah. is bar con over. So there is a big difference between the between the employee of the month board backed yeah. up by an institutional process of calculation versus the one where you kind of do it for the sake of doing it. Ad hoc or, you know, just on your knowledge. So, so we have a calculation methodology. We have point systems. We say that, okay, uh, this time mechanical did a better job than electrical or operations did a better job than mechanical. So within operations, he was the star or she was the star. So let's kind of employee of the month is this. It's a, it's not just an institutional system in terms of um, a frequency or the number of people. It's also institutional in terms of the way you do the do the backup, which is you know how do you come to the conclusion that this is the person chosen. Over a period of time, a reward and recognition system that is not based on logic or not based on criteria or measurable you know uh, things will not impact positively the, the engagement of the employees employees respect um, um, rewards only when it is based on um, you know so meritocracy essentially you know you have to reward meritocracy and it is possible that sometimes we have one employee getting two employee of the month in a year amongst 400 employees we are okay with that as well this question comes up that uh, this person has already got should we give him again so my question to them is has he was he really the best this month? They say yes. Then give it to him again. What's the big deal? You are talking about rewards, recognition, and you know how uh, you know to you know deal with disgruntled uh, employees at the work. You said there is a scientific process at yes. place, and, and it should be publicly and known. You know, that the metrics should be not... kind of sometimes we put up the metrics on the board saying that this this month. This section has scored more and this employee is kind of better. So the, when there is a scientific basis of providing rewards, then the efficacy of the rewards is more. It, it is not just with the person whom you reward, but also with the community at large because they say, okay, tomorrow we can get there if you do good work. So directionally, rewards and recognition system can be extremely productive and extremely unproductive. If you have a scientific basis of providing of rewards, it can get extremely productive because it goads everybody to do better. However, if you don't have a scientific basis and you get into, you know, kind of favoritism and, you know, all that happens in the workplace, um, typically, you know, you understand what I'm saying. So then it becomes extremely unproductive because people say, whatever you do, you're not going to be there. You know, it's going to be somebody else. So we are extremely not cautious. Favoritism, favoritism card that one plays. You yeah. know, that, so we are extremely that cautious of, of this aspect. That, you know, they must know why somebody has been rewarded. And somewhere in the whole performance management system, it reflects in the dialogue as well. You know, when you have your performance dialogue with the, with the junior, you need to tell the person straight eye to eye that, yes, this is the reason why you've been rated good or not good. And this is what you need to do to get better. Once that happens, you know, the, the level of grievances that people have goes down drastically. When, when we talk about happiness, you know, how do we change, uh, you know, engagement to involvement? But I think that is an higher degree to achieve. You know, engagement is one no, part. So involvement, I treat at a lower level, a lower degree. Okay. Because I was talking about empowerment, involvement as one. Engagement yeah. is when you are engaged. See, my definition of engagement to, to kind of yeah. tell you is engagement means um, I will not allow anybody to talk ill about my company in my personal or my professional space i encountered a conversation where somebody you know one of the, um, the relatives was talking about the company and the person just got annoyed and he said how do you know 
don't talk about it i know my company it is not like this so that's engagement you know second aspect okay. of engagement is when you are you know cover up you say that i'm emotionally invested if anything happens to my company if the share price goes down i may not be an invest i may not have invested in shares but if the share price goes down i feel bad that's a gloomy day i feel oh my god why has the share price gone down because you are emotionally invested into the organization you know it's it's kind of a a, a phrase a, a, sorry, a phase where you want all people to put their efforts together for example you know you you find somebody who's kind of getting overloaded there are two ways an in, engaged yes. employee will say what and a disengaged employee will say what an engaged employee will say hey if this is a reality yaar it happens in all the companies you know that's kind of tied it over you don't want some more resources the disengaged guy will say yeah it happens with you every day why do you slog so much what is the company giving you so this is how i perceive you know engagement and disengagement and okay. these are some of very very kind of pertinent observations that you can make in the body language of the person talk about the company if the person kind of reacts negatively saying that why are you saying this i don't agree this is an engaged employee and i can see that we jsp has a lot a very high percentage of engaged employee i mean they become emotional it's also coming out in our uh, great place to work surveys the sense of belongingness the pride that employee has you know that we have been through bad and then we have kind of risen from there and we have done so well that whole pride is kind of it 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 you know it kind of uh, comes very um, you know very significant in the whole survey the pride scores the highest so whenever pride scores highest trust me engagement would be very high i have seen But, employees who are complaining about things saying that i don't have this house i wanted this house i have a big family but yet when you talk about the company they say no 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 um, don't say that you know yeah we are a great company but mera ghar ka dekh lijiye you know so 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 it can always coexist you know you can have complaints but still you can be engaged and you may not have complaints you might be in a very hunky dory situation but you still may not be engaged matlab menu ki matlab it doesn't matter Yeah. that's what i have seen in a lot of you know very big brands in india where people are not bothered i mean they don't even track the share price they don't track the revenues here here employees i find they track revenue they say oh sir we have done so well you know it's 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 a change for me it's a change for me and that shows a very high level of ownership at employee level yeah i i have not seen this kind of a you know ownership before where you know everybody is tracking your everybody is looking at okay did this month we did well and you know um, are we doing uh, is our growth rate better than x or y these are the questions that people ask in in, in you know in uh, in this in the in the forums in the in the kind of communication forums they are very worried that are we not doing better than our competitors so this shows a very high level of engagement but generally tell me you know generally how long does it take to achieve this kind of status you know among employees i'm saying when you say that you know that my employees are you know super engaged or they have a sense of ownership for the organization does it you know it would so happen I, I, in 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 case of jsp uh, jindal steel and power i always saw a higher level of engagement you know it's just that you know we were you know we had to work a little bit on the frameworks that we had to build around you know the four elements which is communication on uh, you know uh, the education or the reward and recognition and the uh, you know empowerment things you know so the you know these are something very intrinsic to the to the organization and they really can't be created in one or two you know years so um, this is something that stands out in 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 jsp you no but you but have, if you see that i'm happy about something and yet proud about the organization that's very unique yeah so no my point is that you know if if you know have you seen do you have some uh, you know data points or have you observed that you know if generally an employee who has spent 3 years 4 years or 5 years will show that kind of ownership or you know generally it takes time to build up up uh, again if you're doing it through a structure it will not take time to build up because you know you're measuring everything you're measuring intermittently yeah you understand you're measuring that okay um 
how many suggestions have I got? How many people have I covered in Samadhan sessions? How many grievances have I redressed? What is the percentage compliance? You know, I, I'm making this very fundamental point here. I, it's not about HR. It's about anything. You have to measure every bit of what you do. as And, you know, convert, you know, people think it's an art subject. You know, convert it into science. Art should top up your efforts because, you know, there's something that goes beyond science. And that is where, you know, you should kind of... Wisdom would have a role to play. But more importantly, and to answer your question, the yes. most important thing for me is that I get to see, um, fundamentally, I get to see that, you know, the engagement levels have gone up because you have started working on the sub KPIs, basically. Like example, if you do a Samadhan session yes. and don't, really track with your office later that out of the 20 problems that people came up with, how many of them have been solved and how many of them have been reported and and uh, the, the, the person who complained is satisfied about it. You know, three stages. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You got my point. So suppose on a Samadhan session of three hours, 20 people met me, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, in, in 20 kind of, there were some things that got solved immediately kind of got answered, but there are some 15 of them which need a redressal. Uh, yeah. And then you call the relevant people or you ask your office to take care and you ask your HR heads to take care. And end of the day, before the next Samadhan session, you have not really told those people that, look, you said this, we, we have taken care, your complaint is not genuine. Please understand. Or the 14 of them whose complaints were genuine, you will tell them that, look, we have taken care of this. This is a short-term thing that we are doing. And some of them might require a long-term thing. So you tell them that, look, we are working on it. We, we've taken cognizance of your complaint. And it is going to cause larger good to the people. So don't worry. It will happen in six months' time. When you do that, you evoke a great deal of faith. It just builds up. You know, it just asymptotically increases. Because from no faith to very high level of faith. Because somebody has cared to get back to them. The first part is hearing them out. But you know, constant hearing without action can be as detrimental as not hearing at all. Yeah. So the grievance redressal mechanism, we have a flow sheet for that, you know, a proper okay. flow chart. How do we do grievance redressal? And I'll be happy to pass it on to you when I'm just off the record. Yeah. Maybe you can take yeah. a look of how we do it. More importantly, uh, serious nature of complaints get escalated immediately. And the non-serious nature of complaints go through a proper uh, normal route. Yeah. So even at, at the first stage, we just kind of segregate. We, we don't want to kind of do everything together. So we say out of 20, two are very serious. So I will speak to the concerned HR head or the unit head directly on a call and close them. Whatever. Really? In a day or two, whatever. Really? Really? Uh, and yeah. I would let the institutional mechanism correct the rest of the 18 if they are genuine. I would not look at all 18 of them together. And I would not be overawed that 20 complaints have come, so I have to solve all of them together. I'll chew only what I can, you know, um, do it. By. So, so, so I think somewhere when people say that they're not expecting a callback, and when they get a callback, they're pleasantly surprised. And uh, some of them might have forgotten what they said. And then when you call them and say that, look, uh, Mr. So and so, I we looked into it. Um, it will take about six months. We are looking at the housing allotment policy or whatever, X, Y, Z. Yeah. And, you know, we'll come up with it. Don't worry. We've taken note and we'll correct it. As an institutional process, we'll correct it. The second option is very tell the person that, okay, your complaint was genuine. Come back to my office and I have an kind of whatever is to be done. It is done. Third is that you tell the person, look, it was not genuine. We have investigated and uh, we want to tell you that please don't make such uh, complaints without getting into detail. So these are the broad three categories where... And the fourth, of course, could be a very serious nature of complaint where there is an ethics violation or there is a major, you know, kind of yeah. um, uh, some code of conduct violation or something. So this is how we deal with that. When your when your institutional process is understood by your employees, they they uh, kind of understand institutional processes the same way as your intent. It is kind of, it becomes synonymous with the word intent. That, okay, management ka intent bahut hai. Yeah. 
result nahi bhi aata hai na even if you kind of don't it doesn't reflect into results in the next 15 days they start building faith in you and that is what reflects into what you said i mean the question that you asked yeah, that I, is I why you are like, saying that engagement would not depend on the tenure of the employees if you know even it could be a graduate engineering trainee and if he or she sees that the management has intent to do good for the employees you know they will they, it will slowly build on that sense of ownership and engagement an example is a graduate engineer trainee complains kind of a frivolous complaint but about the quality of food yeah so next day we go to the canteen as a group we look at the food then we call the person we say what is the problem tell us person is not able to explain because the food was really good but the person said yesterday the food was not good sir i am sorry i think uh, i made it on another occasion another person in another location makes a complaint we again go and we find that the food was not good so we kind of discuss with the with the uh, you know the vendor and we say that okay please step up your quality these kind of interventions by the senior management is not done in other companies our Which unit heads sense. our leaders they all do it it is not just me sometimes chairman visits uh, the canteens md visits the canteens he goes in shifts md goes in shift night shift to see what are the kind of things that people are lacking or what they want one day he told me that you know this place the tea was coming late or the tea was getting cold so again we next day we made arrangements so that the tea was served hot in the night shift and you know so i mean it's a it's it's a it's a continuous effort you know you have to go keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it every time and um, it's kind of also about the plan do check act you know if you just plan and do it and then don't check and act on it again then you know it's kind of it's not a virtuous cycle it has to be a virtuous cycle great great talking to you pankaj so that was pankaj lochan talking about what keeps employees at jspl happy and he is the man in charge for that lovely talking to you once again pankaj thank you so always. much for the opportunity i know you know thank you it's our pleasure you. thank you for it's you know matching my time Insightful so discussion with you, and and the way you explain, the way you know, you know, it makes it much more interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Bangal. Bye. Take care. Yeah.